What does the Supreme Court of Appeals ruling against assisted suicide mean to the terminally ill? On which grounds does Dignity SA support euthanasia? And why has the Justice Department welcomed the Supreme Court of Appeals ruling? Why is there a constitutional right to life and not the right to death? What time is it? It's question time. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Mpo Tseru. The right to die and the right to live has become a contentious issue lately. This after the Supreme Court of Appeal in Bloemfontein set aside last year's ruling by the North Houting High Court in Pretoria, which allowed doctors to perform euthanasia or assisted suicide on terminally ill patients. The High Court had given Cape Town advocate Robin Strutzheim forward permission to be assisted in ending his life by a medical doctor. Strassam Ford had terminal prostate cancer and wanted to die with dignity, he said. The Justice and the Health Departments had challenged the High Court judgment, arguing that it had far-reaching implications and may possibly be abused. The Justice Department has welcomed the verdict given by the Supreme Court of Appeal. We are live and therefore you can call us and air your views. The number to dial is 0891104210. Our Twitter handle at question time 24. My guest, Advocate Michael Masuta, is the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, and he's joining us uh, from our Pretoria studios. We're also expecting Mwalima Fakude, who's from the National Interfaith Council of South Africa, and Professor Sean Davison from Dignity SA. But, uh, Minister, welcome to Question Time. Really appreciate you making time to talk to us. Um, well, the department welcomed the ruling. Um, what, what informs your opposition to um, uh, euthanasia in the Republic? Well, <laughs> the common law uh, makes it a criminal offense uh, to kill someone. Um, and that includes uh, killing somebody uh, in the so-called assisted uh, suicide uh, situation. And we believe that um, that law should remain intact. Uh, remember that the common law, customary law, and statutory law that existed before the current constitutional dispensation, according to the Constitution, continues to apply unless otherwise repealed or, or changed. Now, what the judge sought to do in this case was to change our common law of murder and culpable homicide uh, to uh, now exclude uh, instances of euthanasia, which we thought was a far-reaching step for a judge um, to change the law in that manner. Uh, he in his judgment uh, indicated that he was developing the common law uh, in this way and, and we felt that um, that um, is not in keeping with our constitutional uh, principle in the Bill of Rights uh, of the right to life. But then what happens, Minister, in the event uh, that indeed some people are suffering um, beyond a point where anybody can can help them I, is it not also their right to choose that you know what I've had enough of this pain um, I need to just depart um, in a less harmful way well um, one accepts that there comes a time in life when uh, you know uh, life becomes unbearable uh, it does not necessarily have to be in the form of physical pain some people commit suicide because of um, not seeing it clear in their way um, to overcome debt uh, to overcome grief 
uh, for, for the loss of loved ones. Uh, there are many circumstances where p people would find life unbearable and physical pain is just but one of them. Equally, there are many ways in which people uh, may choose to end their lives, um, medical means being one of them. Um, there are many other ways in which people commit suicide every day. Um, the difficulty here is where you are now requiring a profession uh, which is regarded uh, and which has committed itself in terms of its own oath to preserving life, um, to change its character and make it uh, to be a profession that um, is also uh, given a new mandate, namely to end life. And our fear is that that fundamentally changes uh, the role of doctors especially, and it leads to all manner of um, un, uh, desirable and unforeseeable circumstances, which could also include uh, rampant abuse uh, of, such, uh, of such powers. Okay, we welcome now Dignity SA's uh, Sean Davidson from our <coughs> Cape Town <coughs> studios. Sean, um, you obviously disappointed, uh, you know, that um, the, uh, I mean, the Supreme Court of Appeal has now ruled against you. Um, what were the grounds that you advanced? Why do you want euthanasia to be legalized in South Africa? Well, I think we need to look at the actual case that was approved by the High Court. It was one man, terminally ill, suffering unbearably at the end of his life. He made a simple request. He would like to choose his time of death and to die with dignity. A very simple, humane request. This is not what this Court of Appeal was about. What we're looking at here is a human rights issue. Most people would claim to support human rights, this was about human rights and the right to die with dignity. It's about human suffering. But did you hear what the minister said, though? I did. He did refer to suicide, and we need to keep in mind that suicide is not illegal. People commit suicide all the time, every day. There are probably thousands of suicides in South Africa every year. These people often die by terrible, violent means, hanging, shooting, and various other means. Now, if we change the law and have the option of an assisted death, these people can die with dignity. Now, in particular, I'm referring to elderly people at the end of their lives, they've lived full and complete lives. Statistics show that they're four times more likely to commit suicide and more likely to succeed. Yeah, but they're not a attempting to end their lives. Yeah, sure. Wh why, why do you want somebody else to take the responsibility of that death why aren't, aren't okay. people who want to choose to die able to do that themselves okay the point i'm coming to is that most people assume this law change is about ending lives in fact it is really about saving lives the people who may be considering suicide if they know they have the option of an assisted death they're very likely to hold on and wait and die a natural death. It seems that people are committing suicide while they can, before they lose the ability to end their own life. And this is backed up by countries where the law has changed. The number of elderly suicides has dropped dramatically. Is it, is it like a safety net, knowing you've got that option of an assisted death? And but can I please highlight a very important statistic? If we look at Oregon in the United States, there, the number of people granted an assisted death and the number of people who actually take it is only is a 40% a gap of people who do not take it. The implication being that 40% only want the security of knowing they have that option available. Okay. Minister, are you sold? No. Uh, <coughs> well, even the question of suicide, really, I mean, uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it's a bit of a, a uh, short of a better English word, a red herring, to say that uh, suicide is, uh, is perfectly lawful. 
uh, unfortunately when you're dead you cannot face the consequences of uh, your actions even against yourself because uh, you are not there anyway um, <coughs> but uh, th there are some consequences in law I, I believe even in cases of suicide because for example uh, many insurance policies I'm sure uh, would have restrictions on, on payouts in, in situations where people have committed suicide and if it was perfectly okay for people to kill themselves um, I'm sure there wouldn't be such issues um, so I, I, I think that uh, the our law generally um, celebrates life uh, our constitutional order is such that it promotes not only life but quality of life and what we should be focusing on is what are these things that lead people to suicide what are these things that lead to people killing other people for that matter whether in the form of crime or, or anything and begin to ad address the underlying causes that raise the um, the, the, the undesirable uh, incidents of, of death generally, whether on the roads, whether through suicide, whether through murder, uh, etc. And uh, when it comes to uh, medicine, the, the, the medical profession should continue to do more work in the form of research to find ways that would, uh, if, if um, healing cannot be achieved, uh, at least pain could be significantly reduced uh, where people are able to, uh, even in their sick beds, um, you know, live a life which is uh, less um, uh, psychologically and physically uh, unbearable. Okay. Minister, hold it there. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll continue our discussion and we'll be taking your calls on the numbers that are on your screen. There's 089 110 We shall return shortly. more than a gift it's capturing summer magic get a galaxy s7 edge in blue coral for 599 rand per month on smart s plus a gear vr headset or an accessory kit water wise water is an essential need the scarcity of it could lead to loss of many lives including livestock plants and much more it requires us to use it sparingly and responsibly in times of need failing which our taps and sanitation will not function. For more on water and weather issues, stay tuned to News Today, every Friday at quarter to five Central African time. SABC News, making you water wise. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. Indeed, you can call us and hear your views 89 My guest, Advocate Michael Masuta, he's the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services here in the country. He's in our Pretoria studios. Whereas uh, Professor Sean Davidson from Dignity SA is joining us uh, from Seapoint Studio in uh, Cape Town. Well, as you are in Sprite, welcome. Yes, how are you, Prof? I'm well. Thanks for the call. Yes, I just want to check with uh, the minister there. Okay. They say they are pro life. Yes. But the, the abortion is perfectly legal here. So, what's the difference between abortion and this assistant uh, killing? Thank you. Okay. Minister? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> life begins at birth. So says our common law, so says our law as it stands currently. And therefore, what we are talking is life after birth, uh, uh, underline birth, not death. Uh, <coughs> so that is the context. Um, I, I don't know if I need uh, elaborate further. 
but is it not a technical issue here? I mean, um, and on the other hand, uh, and I was hoping that we would have uh, already had uh, our, our other guest from the faith-based community, um, that do you think as government you're being boggled down uh, perhaps uh, on issues uh, of, of religion which you're supposed not to even consider as, as the state? Well, look, uh, the Constitution firstly says that um, it upholds the supremacy of the Constitution and it says that anything that is inconsistent with it is invalid. And the Constitution is a cornerstone of the kind of uh, democracy that we have chosen for ourselves. And that Constitution further says that uh, the rule of law uh, reigns supreme. So um, that is the framework within which we uh, operate and which uh, brings us together as a society across all forms of persuasions. And okay. hence this Saturday, we will be celebrating 20 years of that constitution. Uh, <coughs> now, uh, of course, that same constitution makes room for diversity of thought, uh, of religion, uh, of culture, etc., and therefore those that, according to their religion, um, certain values need to be upheld, or conversely, uh, those who are disagreeable to particular values, they are at liberty to do so as long as, in doing so, they uh, do so within the framework of the Constitution and the law. Okay, Ruth, you are in Boxback. Welcome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, can I go ahead? Yes, go ahead, Ruth. Um, uh, I'm from Boxburg, and I just want to state, you know, God brought us into this world, and each one has got their own church uh, denominations. And I do believe uh, you've got to go right to the end so God takes you. But I go for the professor because I work uh, uh, a lot with that. And I do believe that the mercy uh, uh, seat must come back so that you have got to die in dignity. And it's not for justice to say how you must die because if the children uh, can see you suffering, they can have a choice to actually put off the machines. And I don't think it's, it's uh, for justice to decide. If you've got, I'm a Christian, and if I have really and truly feel within my heart, I've had enough. God knows my heart. I love God. So the professor is very, very right at this moment. Okay. So therefore, like the, uh, the judge said or who, whoever, he stated that you got to go through the, the the documentation to get and decide from suicidal for abortions or for that. So why don't they bring the hanging back? Okay, Ruth, thank you very much. Let me just go to Cape Town. Prof, what is dignified death? A dignified death is a peaceful death. We tend to assume most elderly people die peacefully in their sleep. Yeah, but, but this is exactly, that's where I wanted to come to, Prof. It's a very, who, very difficult and very painful who's at peace and undignified with death here? process. This law change is about shortening the distance between dying and death. We're all going to die, but surely we can have the option of a peaceful death. And I emphasize option. This law change is only about having the option available. Nobody will be forced to take it. But Keeping in prof, mind prof, that prof, anybody prof, 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 uh, prof, let me just uh, interject here. Who, who is at peace with this death? Uh, when you talk of peaceful death and dignified dying, who are we most worried about or who are you most worried about? Are you worried about the observant, I mean, the, the observing uh, relatives and family or are you worried about the person himself who, I mean, in other instances, yes. maybe in a coma and perhaps not feeling anything, but, uh, you know, people are saying yes. we need to, to get uh, some digni dignity in this death? Mm. 
there's only one person that matters, and that is the person that is dying. And they are usually not the problem. It is the people who are watching are the ones who often oppose it. The person who's dying is usually desperate to die, really desperate. And this can happen to anybody. We, it's a very difficult issue, and people who haven't thought about it before might think it's very odd or weird, but when they get to a situation where they're personally involved, maybe a parent or grandparent having a dreadful death, or even themselves, then they realize, yep, now I understand. I wish I had that option of a peaceful death. Okay, even Robin Prof, Stratton hold it there, Paul hold it there, said Prof. To me before he died. Hold it there, we need to take a quick call from uh, KZN. Good news, welcome. Uh, how are you, Mbo? Yeah, Prince Ah, uh, It's nice, Mbo. Yes. Very good. No, Mbo, well, my point is that you see people who are cowards, they would like to be get killed if they feel, if they feel they are not going to be survive anymore. But as I, I, I make good news, it was a good news to be born. born. Yes. It, no, not by my mother, he was able to create me. He's a God. So yes. if God, he want to take me or get killed or be shot or to be sick, I'm not a coward who to be one day I know that I will be die. I will die. Yes. Never mind how, how painful it will be. But I will, st I will, I will wait until the, my breath is just goes by itself, not someone to to, to switch to off my, the my life. If you shoot me, I know you're doing a criminal. But if I just die by myself, no matter it take, it will take a, how 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 long, or how painful I will be. Mm -hmm. To me, it will be like to Good wait news. for a God to take me, take my life. That's my point is. Good news. Thank you very much for, for, for that contribution. Minister, is, is there a position um, in, in South African law on euthanasia? And I just want you to, if you have said this, just perhaps to repeat it, because I don't think the matter would have gone to, uh, to court if there was clarity on this. Under South African law, as we speak, it is a criminal offense to assist somebody to commit suicide. You become a party to ending the life of that person. You become the instrumentality of the death of that person. And therefore you could be charged with murder or at best culpable homicide. Now that is based on our common law of murder and culpable homicide. There was no need for Parliament to pass a law to outlaw that because it was already a part of our law, mm. which uh, what they were trying to do here was to challenge the validity of that law uh, under our Constitution and Bill of Rights. And clearly the court was not amused, uh, certainly the Supreme Court of Appeal and uh, it had very harsh words uh, to uh, level against, um, to issue against uh, the judge who delivered this judgment. And we, we do not have the time to go through the many, many criticisms okay. uh, that the court leveled against that judge. But I want to say something quickly in response to two points that were made earlier. Yes, you, ask a pertinent, you ask a pertinent question, whose dignity? And the lady who spoke before the professor says uh, that if the children uh, find it unbearable, uh, whereas the professor in answering your question says um, there's only one person who matters and that is the, the dying person himself. Um, now already you can see that different people are coming into this from different angles. Uh, there isn't even a common point of departure as to what purpose is sought to be served, um, uh, who stands to benefit. Now the difficulty with that, and it's not a small matter, the difficulty with that is that there are many s uh, people who may have all sorts of incentives to have somebody's death ended quicker than their natural death. 
uh, for example, there may be people who stand to benefit financially. Well, children might say we will be relieved of the burden of having to look after our parent uh, because he, uh, you know, all the responsibilities that go with it. Others may say, well, the sooner this person dies, the sooner we get our millions out of their estate. Uh, okay. So there are many perverse incentives that are at stake here. Minister, thank you very much. Prof, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but thank you for making time to really clarify this subject matter. Certainly, it's going to be a matter to be discussed and debated uh, as people hold different views on the subject. But that was question time for today. A big thank you to my guests and to you for watching the show. From me and the entire crew, you have yourself a wonderful time. Ibe Holt. Thank you.